everybody, Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. I know it's been a few weeks since we posted any videos and I apologize to that for you guys. Sometimes life gets in the way and that happened with us for sure. Um, things that were much more important to us took priority over the YouTube videos. So I've still stayed a little bit active. I've put some blog posts out over the last couple of weeks, uh, but certainly haven't taken the time to do any uh, any kind of videos, mainly because frankly we were just too busy doing other things to, uh, to be concentrating on the boat. Um, just to bring everybody up to speed, uh, on Wednesday, August the 9th, um, my lovely bride Deb's mom, Joan, lost her battle to lung cancer. Uh, it had been going on for quite some time. This is actually the second time the lung cancer has been back. It's been terminal for, for many months. Um, and you know she was slowly progressing um, you know, down this path of, of not getting any better, unfortunately. Uh, and you know these are really trying and hard times. And Deb was taking care of her and certainly doing all that she could. Um, but as you can imagine, that kind of event certainly takes priority over you know videos and boat repairs and everything else we were doing. So we've spent the last couple of weeks, um, you know, making arrangements and whatnot. And and honestly, Deb's been a trooper doing all of this. So um, you know, I know it's um, I know it's not easy for her. And uh, I've told her a hundred times already how impressed I am with her ability to stay strong and care for the family and make sure that her mom had the best. Um, remaining moments on earth and, and with a family member that she loved so I know that all those things happen and, and for that I'm forever grateful for my wife and I know her mom would be as well uh, so we did have a uh, we did have a, a ceremony uh, on the 28th so we uh, we had a, a little get-together with friends and family um, Deb's mom was an interesting character she said I don't want anybody getting together and being sad about me you guys throw me a party so that's exactly what we did. We had a nice get together. We shared some wonderful memories of Joan. Um, it was a time for some grieving, obviously. Um, you know, for Deb losing her mom, and for for Deb's dad losing his wife, uh, wife of 56 some odd years. Uh, so certainly, you know, like I said, trying times. But that's the reason why we haven't been uh, concentrating a whole lot on the videos. Certainly been focusing on other things. Uh, I also was traveling a little bit for work in the last week or so. Hurricane Harvey decided after beating into the Corpus Christi coast that it would go back out into the Gulf of Mexico and come eastward. It was supposed to hit about Beaumont, then it looked like it might go toward Lake Charles. Now it looks like it's going to be somewhere between Lake Charles and Baton Rouge. The further east it goes, the more concerning it gets for our area. Um, if you recall our video on storm surge, you know that to be to the north and the east side of a storm, at least in the northern hemisphere, uh, for any kind of hurricane or low pressure system, is probably the worst place you can be. That's where you're going to see the biggest surge. So I'm actually not worried about the winds. Uh, it is just a tropical storm right now. Winds are right now projected about 68 miles an hour. Um, it'll probably die down on that before we got to our point, uh, our point of land. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but I am worried about flash flooding. Uh, if you watch the news, you know Houston got 30 some odd inches of rain and it completely flooded. Um, it floods because it's a concrete jungle, right? There's nowhere for the water to run off. Fourth largest city in the US. We're not in that boat, however, the challenge we're going to have here is, this is so wet already, it's already marshland, there is nowhere else for that water to really run off other than into the water. So you get the low pressure system in the Gulf pushing a storm surge up from the Gulf of Mexico into Lake Bourne, into Lake Pontchartrain, that raises the level of the lake. You also have all the water and runoff from anywhere north of here that starts running down to this area. I think the two are going to converge and ultimately raise the water level. Water level is up about two and a half feet since yesterday. I was actually out of town in Boston, took an early flight home just because I want to make sure I, one, I could get home uh, to do any kind of work we needed to do, and now I'm just kind of going through preparations. So the question becomes, what are preparations? Um, I'm not worried about the hurricane hit. I mean, we get perfectly clear. Uh, I don't want to dismiss that, but that's not the area that I think is going to be the bigger concern. I'm really worried about flash flooding and red rising waters or potentially fast running runoff water. So here's some of the things I'm doing to prepare. So I have our extra dinghy over here. I keep it around this trailer. This is the extra one we have. And um, right now what I've done, and it's a very odd feeling to do this, I have disconnected it from the trailer. So I have untied the latches on the back, the straps. I've untied the uh, bow hook. And what I've done instead was, you can see the thick line that's run through the front. I've essentially run it over here, snaked it through the grass, and I actually tied it to my neighbor's trailer because this thing is a monster three axle trailer. It's not gonna float or go away. So that's just a place to anchor it. My thought is if we end up with rising floodwaters through here, at least the dinghy won't take off and go somewhere else. I was a little bit worried about rising waters. Essentially what could happen is it could end up in all these trees behind me. 
certainly don't want that. So I've also taken about an eight or nine foot line and essentially just tied it to the back of the trailer here. This isn't a very heavy trailer, but my thought was this would be at least enough to keep the boat from going too far from here. If we end up with more than eight or nine feet in here, I would be shocked. But between this tied to the trailer and also the large line tied to that big thick trailer, if the water does flood here, hopefully I don't lose the dinghy. And by lose it, I mean literally lose it like it floats away somewhere. So that should at least keep the dinghy in place. Uh, the next thing now is, I hate to say it, we've grown some roots since we've been here. We're still doing a lot of work on the boats. What that means is, Deb and I both have a vehicle. Um, and because we haven't transitioned to be cruisers yet, uh, we also have a golf cart and my other truck, which I haven't sold. So I'm going to remove those up to higher ground. This area back here is just my dry storage area, but here's our old golf cart. So I'm going to hop in this thing and see if we can't get it moved up to higher ground. I'm just going to take it about a block north of here. If I was really worried about um, the wind, I would probably take this thing and drive it all the way up to our storage shed and keep it inside the storage shed where we have our tools and whatnot for all the refit work we're doing on the boat. But I'm actually, again, I'm not that worried about it. Like I said, it's, it's doing 68 miles an hour or 63 miles an hour or something right now in the Gulf of Mexico. But the reality is when that thing hits land, it's going to slow down. So I'm really not as concerned with the winds as I am with the rising water and the amount of rain we're going to get. So because of that, I'm okay leaving this thing parked up in this cul-de-sac just to make sure it stays safe. Uh, let me pull it up here to the block and I'll show you where I'm going. But this puts me a good 15 to 18 feet above the sea level, so that's going to be good. I'm going to move my truck up here as well. Oh, there. You can see the golf cart over my shoulder. Got my keys. And I'll just walk on back down to the marina. And then I'm essentially going to do the same thing with the expedition and I'm going to park it right there next to it. Just to give you a sense of where we are here, uh, one block and then the next block where you see the mast right there, that's the marina. So we're up certainly above seawater for right. sure. Round two, got the expedition sitting next to the golf cart. Uh, also situated it so that the, uh, the truck was on the southeast side of the golf cart. The thought was that's where the first bands of rain and wind are going to likely come from if it does. Uh, probably over preparation, but frankly, I'd rather over prepare than under prepare. Hey, everybody from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. It's Gil and Chaz and McKinley. Um, we are all safe and sound. I know a bunch of people have asked how we're doing with the storm, and we are good. Uh, there, there's also a very lot of rain that we got. And um, go away, Harvey. I agree. Go away, Harvey. There is a lot of rain, but um, I believe we are completely safe. We are tied down well. Uh, the water still has a ways to go before it goes up over the docks. So I'm going to do a quick repair to my parquet floor. Uh, interestingly enough, I have a couple of strips of my parquet floor right here that have come up. Um, this one's loose and I have a few others that are loose. Uh, but I'm missing a few too and I think they must have fallen at some point before we bought the boat down in the bilge or they just got picked up and lost. So um, I think I've got a good plan. So I have a few pieces of my parquet floor on the boat that have come up. This is one of the pieces that came up. And for some reason there's like three missing so my neighbor was pulling the parquet floor out of his boat not exactly the same size but i do believe i can make these pretty well to give me essentially the right size it looks like one turn sideways and those will be the perfect size so i'm going to cut a few of these out and we're going to go back and epoxy them down in the boat it's a small and simple thing and i'm not even going to bother refinishing these because it's going to match the rest of the floor given that it's fairly good and worn just like mine is so it'll be a good match and then if someday i decide to treat the whole thing and sand it all back down and refinish it well then great but in the meantime this is good and we'll kind of protect the uh the underlayment of this which is essentially plywood all right got these marked here here and here and then i essentially marked each of these at the width i need to cut it right here so you can see i've got my my line right here and I'm basically just going to make six of those, some extras. But that'll be a good place to, uh, to start for patching up what I need. Just getting done at the storage shed, cutting those quick pieces of parquet floor, but look at my little helper conked out on me. Hey helper, how are you? The spot where a couple of the pieces of the parquet floor are at, and you can see the subfloor below it, and then the pieces just came loose. So 
gonna take the ones I cut and put them in here and then once I know they dry fit, I'll epoxy them in. Hey, it's Gil and Debbie from Dream Chaser. A bunch of people have asked, hey, how are we doing with the storm? Uh, I just wanna reassure everybody, we appear to be just fine. This is gonna kinda uh, make landfall um, west of us. That does mean north and east there's a bit of a surge, but because it already went on land and then went back into the Gulf, I don't expect the storm surge is gonna be terrible. We will probably see some runoff rain, uh, but we're prepared. Uh, the kids are safe, we're safe, we have all of our vehicles moved up to high ground um, in the parking lot and we're going to monitor lines um, and we're ready to ditch and get off the boat immediately. Uh, we have a safe place to go just a few miles from here. So we are good to go. Um, uh, today's project is going to be to try and get the bilge of the boat dry. Because um, I don't know if we've shared this on the channel before, but we've had, found we had termites on the boat. We had a company come out and treat them. and. Um, I figure the next good line of defense is making sure we get rid of any moisture that they may be seeking. Um, trying to get the bilge completely dry. We have a couple of um, drains that, um, for the shower drain for example, goes into the bilge. It's not a great solution. So we got a little project in the head. I'm going to try and um, plumb our shower sump. So essentially I have the shower as well as the uh, vanity basin here drain into a sump that then gets pumped overboard with a check valve and a anti-siphon vented loop. So let me show you what we got going on in here. All right, so we've got the uh, the countertop pulled off. We had a new marble one of these cut a while back. The reason I did this is I think it's gonna give me a little bit easier access to get to this. So yeah. This is gonna be fixed. I think it's gonna be fixed, and the we will be safe. Fix it, we will. Like most projects they start out this way. A little plumbing project and I noticed the floor was a little more rotted than I'd like to see. So I started pulling the floor up and sure enough there's certainly some rot down there and it's kind of disgusting. So it's time to clean all this up. I used my camera so I could see what the heck the shower drain connection looked like. So this was helpful. There it is. It's always getting something knocked off the list that makes it feel pretty good so there we go. And I've got it all run to the sump, but I think I'm going to call it a night, and I'll do the rest of it in the morning. Once that's in, I'll be able to put the molding back up around this uh, this vanity. But definitely like the marble; it looks good. Our sink's working, and we're going to be safe, everybody. Hey, everybody! Thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching fellow dreamers.